They say that Christmas is the season for giving. Well, I happen to have a hobby that gives 365 days, depending leap year, 366 days of the year. The orchids, they keep on giving. And well, as you can see, I have roots. So thank you if you're watching on Christmas Eve. A very happy Christmas to you and your family. And thank you if you're watching on any other day of the year. Just so happens that my Pro Catabola Golden Peacock is showing signs of new root growth. And regardless of the day, well, maybe because of the day, I'm going to address her today because she is actually going to be divided and she's going to be given away at such a time that the weather plays ball. And she has been in this pot almost three years now because I still have my old sellotape support in there. And it's a good time to repot and a good time to divide and get her growing on in a separate pot until such a time that she goes to her new owner. So I'm going to try and give this a go to release some of the roots from this angle. And if I find that it is a little bit too awkward, oh no, this will work, I think. I was going to change position for the sake and health of the roots. In the beginning, I always try to salvage as many roots as I can because I don't know what's going on inside the pot. Having said that, I have an indication. Whoops, just broke one. I have an indication of what's going on because when I filled her up in order to pre-soak her, she still gargled. There was oxygen exchange. The bubbles came up and I had to also fill her up another time to get to the right water level in order to get these roots that have wrapped themselves around the outside of the pot into some water. So I already broke one at the end there. So that's only going to be half of a long root. I have my backup roots coming right here, but we've released those. And there's a gorgeous root growing there and there and there. This one is loose. All right, now I'm going to change the angle of the camera and then let's the squeezing begin. Right, here we go. Let's get rid of the wire first. And I hope everybody is having a wonderful, wonderful day. As far as I'm concerned, I'm having a great day because I get to play with an orchid. And this is not me forcing the issue. This is just me having a great opportunity now. Oh dear, pot bound. This is going to take a while. Yeah, this is not coming out. I shall put timestamps. Everybody is very busy. I respect your time and I appreciate your time. So if you don't want to watch all this rigmarole, then timestamps are in the description below. Look at this. Beautiful. But I think it will be compromised. Look at all that. <laughs> okay. It's going to be one of those. Let's see. Oh, she's rock hard. Okay, in the case of rock hard, I have to really be patient and take my time. And when I say that, I mean take my time. Because despite the fact that she was soaked prior, squeezing too much also causes certain friction and contact tension inside the pot. So I'm going to, with the tweezers, release everything that is loose on the top to give me an area where I can start squeezing instead of just going nuts 
and crushing roots inside that I haven't seen yet. I could be more bold, more aggressive, because I've got lots of roots growing, which I will show you once I get to that stage. But I don't want to set her back. I know it is winter, and I really want her to keep, keep this growth dynamic going so that when it comes time to send her to her new owner, she is as strong leaving the property as she is now. So removing the lecker from the top gives me some space in order to start my squeezing. Because I also want to maintain the pot. I really don't want to be losing pots. Look at this. I don't have to be super picky about what is going on in the pot. There's enough coming on the surface. It's going to last this orchid perfectly. All right. And you would think that that makes no difference at all. And you're right. It doesn't. She's solid in here. So this is not going to be a quick repot. It will once I finish editing it. <laughs> but no, she's solid. Okay, it's been almost 20 minutes of squeezing and rotating. I'm going to forfeit, sacrifice the microfiber down here and the roots. She's in there tight. I already heard the pot crack. So it might also mean the pot's got to go. This is insanity. An orchid grower's dream. But insanity nonetheless. So the, the lady that is getting this orchid, if you're watching, yeah, you're gonna get a very vigorous and happy root growing orchid. <laughs> I can feel a little bit of a wiggle in the pot. But because of her little pseudobulbs that are quite fine, I want to be especially sure that she's loose enough because I don't want to come off with a piece ripped in my hand. That is not the idea at all. My word. So I'm going to I'm using the middle part of the orchid, the oldest part, see if I can get something to budge. And I'm not. I don't want to crush the growth. I really don't. If I come out of this with this root tip intact, <laughs> I will be very happy. I may have to forfeit the pot. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing budging here at all. So it's cracked up here. This is a first on my channel. I have broken, I had some broken pots before because of the UV influence, but you know, after three years, this happens. But I've never purposely attacked a pot. So here we go. Ah. 
I am mindful of that root tip. That's why I left the rim as it is right there. But let's try this. Forgive the fantastic footwear. And with that pressure, only four Lekka beads came out. <laughs> if I can find a way to get in with my shears, I think that would also be very helpful, but there's no, I have no gap between the roots and the pot. Okay, drastic measures. I need to create myself a gap where I can get in with the shears. I have to. I'm not able to pull her out. Wow, okay. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Oh my goodness. And we still have that root tip. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're still with me, woohoo, thank you. So we do have some dead roots, that's to be expected. And after all this, I'm not concerned. <laughs> and I shall start the cleanup by working my way from the bottom up. Where's my root tip? There you are. My support. When you start to release the bottom third. This is what you're up against. If the new owner of the cut is watching, this is what you're up against. You have been warned. <laughs> I'll speak a little bit more about what happened with this orchid in the bloom dedication, which I thought was so amazing. And I was told by the owner that she would love to have a piece. And that's what we're doing today. So for the season of giving, this is perfect. I love it. Okay, I've come to the point where I just want to have a look-see, but there's too much lacquer still in here, so I'm going to keep picking away to see where a natural break is. I don't remember when I potted this one up that it was in actual fact two orchids. It has three directions of growth at the moment, so I'm wondering if maybe that there are two in here, but I don't remember that. I'm going to continue cleaning up all the center here and get right in so I can see through everything and get a better picture of where there is a division. Still got the root tip. So I have found where I would make the division. My only thing is that she is very tangled up in there. Let's turn her around. I've still got the root tip. Oh, but she is so tangled up. So this is going to be not just a division as in woohoo, one cut and we're done. No, 
there's more to this. It's going to be untangling the entire upper part of the root ball. But for the time being, I still have some old ones around here I can take off to make my life a little bit easier. So let's see. Still got the root tip. I'm trying to keep it that way. So let me see if I can show you clearly that I have the three directions of growth. And I could cut her right there in that part of the rhizome. There's a nice gap. And yeah, I'm still looking because I'm so uncertain. Or in this part of the rhizome here. And I'm still going to have to untangle to get a better picture. at least to remove some more leka in order to really understand what I'm seeing. This is a separate piece right here. This right here is a separate piece. And this is one that has two directions of growth or no. It was a single piece, is now a separate piece. So there's three pieces in here. I don't know if I have to cut anything, I just have to untangle. That is all I have to do, keep untangling. So I'll be back. Well, that took a while. Are you still with me? <laughs> but this is the piece that's going to go away and it wasn't attached. So there's two or three pieces in there that I didn't think was the case, but hey, I don't go to shows so it doesn't matter. And I will clean this up and we'll pot her up together from scratch and I'll be right back. All right, so now that we've detached the piece to give away, just want to qualify what I'm doing here if you watch a repot of mine for the first time. This is the two sections that I am going to keep and pot up again, clean up a little bit more, but I'm not going to be as pedantic about removing the leka as I was with regards to making that separation. I always do make sure that I have a lot of aeration in my pots after a repot of uh, two years, maximum three. I do not leave my orchids in this setup 
without checking the root system, cleaning it up for more than three years. So this was good timing. But normally I wouldn't go all in. I would only address what really needs to be addressed, which is always up as far high as I can go because that's where the dead roots are. And then I always take out like the bottom third of the root ball, good roots or not, I always trim those. Make sure I still have my growth here and I didn't crush it. I think it's fine, it just looks wet. So I always maintain two thirds of a root ball and I have the luxury of new roots growing in order to be this radical. And I always try to time it in such a way that I do have new roots growing so the orchid doesn't get set back and all it knows is that it now has more air around the roots. It's not squished up, cleaned off some of the dead roots, and it can just bury itself back into a new pot with fresh lecker. So this is not at all the standard kind of repot where I go to town. My divisions are, they have to be simply because I have to get in there, I have to see what I'm doing. And um, by no means is this standard. So I have cleaned her, this one up enough. There's plenty of roots left. Even if it is two pieces, which I suspect very clearly you can see right through. Even now that it is two pieces, I'm leaving it as it is. I'm not going to fiddle around much longer and I'm going to put this piece up as if it were one and I think I did compromise this root tip it's cracked I tried I tried I tried anyway let's pot up the piece that is going to go away first so I've made my pot with my loop I'm going to pot it up in my conventional setup I think that the new owner also is growing in Lekka. I'm not entirely sure if that's what she wants to do with this orchid, but as it is going to be for another couple of months, I'm going to pot her up my way and then the new owner can always decide what she wants to do. And first of all, we're just going to fill in the bottom. Try not to compromise the roots too much by squishing them. If I have put in too much lecker, I will take it out. I give myself that luxury because the roots are used to their environment and if they need to be in the bottom of the pot, that's fine. I'm okay with that. As long as I don't kink them more, we have viable roots going back into the same setup as they are used to, plus new roots growing. I don't want to break what I have. And because I can see roots touching the back of the pot there and I don't want to go stabbing them. Here is, maybe I can show you. Here is the new name tag for the lady, ready to go. And I put that in first because this way I can see where the roots are and I'm not actually poking them and killing them off after all of this trying to careful untangle circumstances. Watch out for some root tips, Nina. Shake everything into place. Fill her up once more. And now I'm just going to leave her to settle in. I don't think she needs a support, but I'm going to give her one anyway, simply because it doesn't cost me anything to be 100% certain about what's going on with her stability in the pot, instead of guessing, is it good enough, is it not good enough? So here's a Procatavola, golden peacock, 
growing on for the new owner. One down, I'll be back when my piece is potted up. While I started with preparing my pot for the cut that I'm keeping, I wanted to qualify something. In the first pot, smaller pot, one microfiber, small orchid. Second pot, much larger. I'm actually bumping it up a size because the test, it didn't fit. And I have two microfibers in here because she is a very, very thirsty orchid. She is a very vigorous bloomer. And I just want to make sure that being in a bigger pot, being a bigger orchid, that everything is provided for her. And I've made myself another loop in order to raise the wicking factor a little bit more up the leka, especially for the hot summer months. That helps me a lot. I only have a support in here for her because sometimes the blooms may not present themselves ideally. So I have a little support in order to be able to do a little wire and then pull the spike back up for a nicer presentation and nicer look at the blooms. And that is the only reason this support is in there. And this one over here is for anchoring. Same thing as with my other one. I'm maneuvering Lekka underneath the loop. I'll show you. So that it's sort of up into the pot and already able to wick at least up to here and then hopefully keep the moisture from drying out too fast on the top surface. And here is my orchid and there is a bent leaf. And I'll be back when I'm done with this potting up. Right. Oh my goodness. Here they both are. Just one more thing, a little bit of fertilized water into the reservoir for the newbie. While I wipe them down, I'm just going to reiterate how this came about. My Blooms For You dedication series actually is, you know, to say thank you to everybody. And then I dedicate an orchid, a bloom, a spike, whatever is available at the time. And I go down my list. And in this case, I had already dedicated my blooming of the Procatabola Golden Peacock based on the list. And I went through and I saw that name and I actually had it already earmarked and she she blooms orange. She's gorgeous. So when I then found out before the lady even knew that I was doing this and she was up, she told me that she lives in Holland. And I was like, you know, sometimes, sometimes I think I need to trademark orchidmatch.com. <laughs> so this is how it came about. So it's going to be very special for me to be able to send her a cut of the orchid that bloomed to say thank you to her for supporting my channel. How cool is that? And it is in the color orange. I tell you, sometimes I do not believe in coincidences. <laughs> so if you are watching this still, thank you so very, very much. I wish you happy holidays with your family, with everybody that means something to you, fur babies, feathered babies, the whole nine yards, everybody have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. Please stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Thank you very, very much. Bye. Thank you.